Well, on Thursday, the World Health Organization put out a report concerning um, scaling up response to this worldwide surge in dengue that's going on. And we have seen uh, absolute increase in dengue cases across the globe um, uh, in 2019. And it starts out, and it talks about Pakistan. And Pakistan is another country that's just seen a large increase in cases in 2019. And it says, as of early November, more than 45,000 people in Pakistan have been infected with dengue virus in 2019. And it also touches on some other countries um, that have seen surges in dengue this year. Uh, numerous other countries in Asia, Americas, and Africa are reporting a higher incidence of dengue than in previous years. And I'm going to touch on uh, some of these countries in, in a region uh, very soon. The rise in outbreaks this year is a wake-up call for governments, policymakers, and researchers to strengthen surveillance and control programs and to step up prevention strategies to include this phenomenal spread of dengue and other vector-borne viruses, according to uh, the World Health Organization. And they talk about how dengue outbreaks have grown dramatically. And this is a little bit of a historical perspective. Um, it was only known to exist in nine countries in the 1970s. Dengue is now endemic in 128 countries and strikes as many as 96 million people each year, according to global data collected by WHO. The unprecedented surge in dengue epidemics across the globe in recent decades has prompted WHO at the start of 2019 to include dengue as one of the list of the world's top 10 public health threats. And you may recall that uh, back in January where antibiotic resistance was one of them and several other um, infectious disease and non-infectious disease issues. Dengue fever was one of those 10. And anyway, so... What I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, touch on one region and a couple countries that have really seen a large increase in dengue this year. And um, then about some uh, work they're doing to hopefully, possibly get mosquito diseases under control. So let's go ahead and start with the Americas. And this has been qu quite the astounding story this year um, where Dengue fever in the Americas, which includes North, Central, and South America and the Caribbean, has seen the highest number of cases recorded so far, with more than 2.7 million cases and over 1,200 fatalities. And that was by the end of October, so we're, it, it's still cooking. Uh, the largest previous epidemic of dengue was in 2015, uh, but the 2019 number of 2,733,635 cases is 13% higher than the 2015 numbers. Uh, despite this increase in cases, um, the lethality has gone down uh, uh, about 26%. All four of the dengue virus serotypes are present in the Americas, and you see this co-circulation of all four of them in several of the countries that are having the worst outbreaks this year, which include Brazil, Guatemala, and Mexico. Brazil itself, and, and this, this is not an uncommon thing, Brazil typically sees the most dengue in the Americas each year. Uh, but this year, it, it surpassed 2 million cases reported. And I believe that's for the first time it's done that. Uh, other countries hit very hard. It's been Mexico with over 200,000, Nicaragua, Colombia, and Honduras. But then when you look at incident rates, which is... Uh, case numbers to the population, the, the number of people. Countries that have had very high incident rates include Belize with over a thousand cases per 100,000 population. El Salvador, Honduras, and others um, have seen very high incident rates this year. Brazil, the country that has 2 million cases this year, um, is, is the country ranked number five as far as incidents with 711 cases per 100,000 population. So big issue with dengue fever in the Americas, big issue with dengue fever in Bangladesh.
Bangl- uh, dengue fever was first detected in Bangladesh in 2000 and hasn't seen a whole lot of cases over the years. We can look here. See, oh, well, that only goes back to 2008, but we're talking not dramatic numbers of cases here. I mean, it'd be a lot for the United States, but for Bangladesh, it's not a lot. And then last year, it went over 10,000 cases for the first time in 2018. 2019, this is through November 9th, so this is a week old. Uh, Bangladesh has seen 97,683 cases. That's way more than all the previous years combined. And here's um, what a uh, line graph where we can see the red line is 2019. And just how it just is astronomically larger than any of the previous years in this graph. In August, it peaked out at 52,000 cases. Very, very dramatic. And it has uh, dropped since, but we're still seeing hundreds of cases every week in Bangladesh. Um, And as far as fatalities, according to the... um, Institute of Epidemiology, Disease, and Control and Research in DACA, there's been 112 fatalities. However, if you do any kind of a Google search and look at um, reports out of Bangladesh media, that number is at least double, if not more. And the next country I want to look at who has seen quite an increase this year is the Philippines. Um, This year has been extremely high for the country. And up to October 19th, so again, this is nearly a month ago, there was 371,717 cases and 1,407 fatalities. And this is, and you can see the little chart up here in the corner, a 106% increase higher than last year, where they saw 180,000 cases during the same time frame. So... A lot higher, and um, one thing I wanted to point out is the current outbreak has already seen the largest numbers of cases and deaths reported in the Philippines in the past 10 years, with three more months to go until the end of the year, so it's only going to get higher, and here's the past decade in the Philippines, and right, we had a couple, couple years several years there, one, two, three, three years with at least over 200,000, which were, you know, astronomically high for the Philippines then. Um, but here we got 371,000 in 2019 and the year's not even over yet. So a lot worse year in the Philippines too. So we, we've seen um, Latin America, Central America, numbers are way up. Bangladesh numbers are way up and the Philippines are seeing a massive increase this year also. And the last thing I wanted to point out in this video is um, the issue of mosquito sterilization. And this is something that's being looked at to be used to get things like dengue and other mosquito borne diseases under control. A technique that sterilizes male mosquitoes using radiation will soon be tested as part of a global health effort to control diseases like chikungunya, dengue, and Zika. The sterile insect technique, or the SIT, is a form of insect birth control. The process involves rearing large quantities of sterilized male mosquitoes in dedicated facilities and then releasing them to mate with females in the wild. As they do not produce any offspring, the insect population declines over time. And they do pinpoint, again, dengue in this article from the World Health Organization. Half the world's population is now at risk of dengue. And despite our best efforts, current efforts to control it are are falling short. We desperately need new approaches, and this initiative is both promising and exciting. Um, In recent decades, the incidence of dengue has increased dramatically due to environmental changes, unregulated urbanization, transport and travel, and insufficient sustainable vector control tools and their application. And it talks about some of the countries that are seeing um, uh, epidemics this year. Um, Diseases transmitted by mosquitoes, such as malaria, right, a parasitic disease, 
dengue, Zika, chikungunya, and yellow fever, all viruses, account for about 17% of all infectious diseases globally, claiming more than 700,000 lives each year. So it's, it's a really horrible thing. Um, so the sterile insect technique was first developed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and has been used successfully to target insect pests that attack crops and livestock, such as the Mediterranean fruit fly and the New World screwworm fly. And I've reported on this on the website OutbreakNewsToday.com in the past that they've used this technique also to um, get uh, CC fly uh, populations under control. Um, so countries seriously affected by Zika, dengue have shown real interest in testing this technology as it can help suppress mosquitoes that are developing resistance to insecticides, which are also negatively impacting the environment. So it's a technique that's out there. looks like there's countries that are interested in it um, as these mosquito-borne viruses and, and malaria uh, continue to be an issue across the globe and in some cases getting a lot worse in some areas. Okay, well, that's what I wanted to talk about concerning dengue fever and uh, the initial report I showed you from the World Health Organization. World Health Organization triggered that, um, that uh, they're really seeing is really being recognized as a massive problem in 2019. So, okay. I hope you enjoyed the video. Comment below, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and please share it with your friends. And I'll see you next time.